Hi everyone, I'm Chris Weber. And I'm Meredith Lane. And we're here to talk a little bit about the Pirate Way, on time, every time. In a few moments, you're gonna see some slides that are highlights from our class meetings last week, where we shared with students of the expectations this semester that we're really excited about. And as always, we thank you for your continued support. Go Pirates. Okay, so let's talk about the Pirate Way, on time, every time. At Fernandine Beach High School, we want to make sure our students know that we're preparing them for more. Whether it's going to be college or career, we're going to prepare them for life after high school. So let's talk a little bit about attendance. So we believe that a student needs to be present so they can learn. There's two types of absences you can have. One's an excused absence, the other one's an unexcused absence. And students can have their ex absences excused if they bring in a parent note or a doctor's note or an orthodontist note. You get six parent notes per semester to excuse absences. After that, you're going to need to have some type of medical documentation. So this semester, if a student has more than five unexcused absences, their grades will def defer to a 59. And the way that we will have to approach that is that a student will then get an appeal at the end of the semester, and then they're going to have to present to us reasons why they have so many unexcused absences. Please note that an appeal is not going to be offered if you have 11 or more unexcused absences. So the point of this whole attendance policy is to make sure that students are bringing in notes to excuse their absences. We really encourage you to bring in a note within 48 hours so we don't have to re go back and get notes from students later on in the semester. Another thing to remember about attendance is that all COVID absences are excused. So we don't want our students to be worried about that. Our next slide is classroom expectations. There's nothing earth shattering here, but these are the foundations for learning. We expect that our students are in class listening to not only the teacher, but their classmates. We expect them to participate in class actively in discussion and in their work. We expect them to do their work the pirate way, on time, every time. And if they're doing their work, we're gonna see success on tests. We know that all of these things together are going to mean that our students are learning and that's why we're here. So on our next slide, we're gonna talk about our new late work policy. This is the whole part of the on time every time. So this is a minimum standard on late work for all of our classes at Fernandina Beach High School. Now, please note that some classes may have a different policy that might be a little bit stricter based upon the level of their course, but every class will have this late work policy as a minimum. We're gonna have this late work policy posted in the classes, and we're also gonna have all of our due dates posted in the classes to help the students know when the assignments are due. So let's talk a little bit about this new policy. You're gonna get full credit for assignments that are turned in on time. Remember, on time, every time. So that means when you turn the assignment at the original due date, you can get up to 100% credit on that assignment. If you miss that due date, your teacher is gonna set a periodic no later than due date and that may be five days after the original due date. It may be two weeks. It's gonna be what they have for their class. Say, for instance, it might be right before their unit test. So for that second due date, a student's gonna have another opportunity to turn in work by that date. And if they do turn it in by that date, they're gonna have the ability to get up to 75% credit for that assignment. If any work is not done by that due date, that no later than due date, then the zero is gonna stand. So I just wanna make sure that we're clear with students that have an IEP or a 504. This late work policy um, does not extend to the actual part of the IEP. They're still gonna get their time and a half for their original due date. There is no extra time for the late work due date. So please make sure that uh, you understand that the IEPs and 504s will still have the accommodations uh, for the student. And our last slide is the one we're most excited about, the student incentive. If you've heard your students talking about it, it's true. At the end of every semester, our teachers give semester exams. If our students meet all three requirements that are on this slide, then they do not have to take their semester exam. This does not include our Florida state mandated tests like the Algebra 1 EOC or their reading tests. For the teacher semester exam to be exempt, students one, cannot have more than two unexcused absences for the semester. 
They have to have a C average or above in the class each quarter. And then they also must meet the no more than three zeros requirement in the grade book. If our students can meet all three of these requirements, then we will be able to have them exempt from their semester exam. This is also per class. So what that means is, is just in case one of those classes, they're not able to meet all three of those, it doesn't mean hope is lost. They still have five other opportunities to be able to be exempt from their semester exam. So we hope this presentation helps you better understand the initiatives for the second semester. We're excited about this and we've had great feedback from the students, but we're all in this together. We're gonna to need your help as well. So if you would, we encourage you to check your students' focus account regularly for their grades, their attendance, and their discipline. We're looking forward to a great second semester.